This, ladies and gentlemen, is the World Car of the Year for 2023, an award that they don't just give out to anybody willy-nilly. Hyundai earned it with this Ioniq 6. Now, on this episode of Behind the Wheel, I would like to go through the exterior of the automobile because, well, it still kind of catches me off. It's a bit polarizing. I'd also like to go through the interior, just exactly how comfortable it is for the driver and passengers and all the tech you find inside. I'd also like to talk about just exactly what it feels like when you're driving this automobile compared to an internal combustion engine. We'll put that all together and find out if the Hyundai Ioniq 6 is actually a good automobile for you, a potential customer here in the Philippines. So I did mention that the exterior is a bit polarizing for me. The front clip, I actually can get along with because to me, it looks like just your average sports car. It's a very large departure from its bigger and older brother, the Ionic 5, which is more cubic. This is more sleek, although it does have the cubes that you will find on the Ionic 5 here, on the Ionic 6 as well, here on the front lights, and as well as down below, a little bit of garnish there. The thing about it is that this automobile looks to me like it can be just your average sports sedan because of the way that the front clip is shaped. The only difference is from an internal combustion engine and this is that the fact that there are obviously no holds up front because there is absolutely no engine to cool. What you do have is a frunk, a front trunk, which is good enough for your charging cords and cables and whatnot. Now, most electric vehicles do have frunks, like the Ionic 5 and even the EV6. But there are some vehicles, say like the iX, that does not have a frunk, or we couldn't get to it because you're not allowed to open the hood. But that's also twice the price, and then it's also got a lot more motors going for it, which is a completely different beast altogether. If you'd like to see our review on the iX, do click on the links found down below. That was a ridiculously fun car to drive. Hachu. Hachu is right. Hachu. <laughs> Down the side, you've got 20-inch wheels wrapped in 45 series tires. More cubes found on the side mirror. These are actually your repeaters. And then cameras found right there. You got 141 millimeters of ground clearance. And then you've got a second tone found on the bottom. This ground clearance is a bit iffy for a lot of people. If you're looking for an electric vehicle with a bit more ground clearance, then head on over to the Ionic 5 because that has got a lot more ground clearance. Even the iX has a lot more ground clearance. And if you'd like to see any reviews, just do head on to the links down below. Now, I'd like to point out that the wheels on this Ionic 6 looks much better than any of the electric wheels or rather wheels on an electric vehicle that I've seen before, wherein I don't want to name names, but if we're going to go and say, let's say, for example, the EV6, the wheels on that guy look like it's the plate inside the microwave. You know, the thing that goes around, it's very, very wide. It's aerodynamic. That works great. It's just that it's not as pretty as these things. Obviously, these aren't as aerodynamic, but thank you. They're very, very pretty. And of course, disc brake front and rear. Now, looking at the silhouette of the car, this is where it gets me. It's gorgeous from the front all the way to the rear. In fact, it reminds me of the Mercedes-Benz CLS, especially with this tiny little lip here. The problem is this thing. I'm not exactly sure if this is actually needed. And what it does is that, well, it makes it look like a VW product, either a Beetle or a 911 with a whale tail. It's just a little off. That whale tail, however, is also responsible for the biggest third brake light I have ever come across. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Safety first. Yet, I will still argue that I would have liked it, if that's its only function, to be maybe here or perhaps up here. Now, this has been a talking point between myself, Jack, and Earl, and the two of them seem to like it, and me, no, not so much. And we all know that Jack and Earl are always wrong. Get with the times, old man. You're just an angry Ferrari fan. Wow. When you open her up by pressing the button here, which has more cubes, by the way, you're looking at 401 liters of space. Not much, and the opening is not big enough for you to fit a Balik Bayan box, but it is quite deep. And it can get deeper because you can pull these levers here, 
and that will fold the backrest. If you're looking for an EV with more space, I suggest you go with the Ionic 5 or even the EV6 because those automobiles are more hatchbacks or SUVs or more spacious. Uh, power tailgate, of course, which nice hinges, by the way, on the side, which Earl absolutely loves. And then you'll notice that there's a lot more cubes on this rear end, like this. It looks like an ice tray, which I love. Perfect for summer, but it's actually a brake light. And it's clear, too. And then more cubes find down below as your reflectors. No exhaust, obviously, in the bottom because it is an electric vehicle. So really, that will wrap it up for the exterior. So I'm okay with the automobile. I think it looks great from the outside. It stands out and it's really quite a head turner. But there are some aspects on this automobile that it's just a little too much. It's like Jack and I are perfect. When you add Earl, it's just too much. That's the kind of thing that <laughs> it's just too much. Now let's go inside the automobile and talk about the interior of the car. That's a look at the, that's a lot of space, man. Now, the headroom is slightly compromised because it is a sloping roof line. Um, but the legroom is actually pretty good. That's the headroom there. The legroom, first class, man. Even in Jack's normal driving position. Uh, other nice things back here is that the, there is no hump in the center, so it's flat. So getting from one side of the vehicle to the other, three adults should fit here quite nicely. This is the first small sized sedan car that I'm thinking to myself, I can be driven in the back without any issues because of the amount of space that you find here in the back. You have amenities such as a center armrest with two cup holders. The chairs do have isofix points. Um, you have two air vents found up front, two USB charging points in the form of type C. So that's obviously fast charging. And then you've got a lot of textures found back here. One thing that I'm not so, sold on is the fact that there are seat warmers. The problem is it's on the door next to the window button and if you mistake that without knowing, yeah, you're gonna cook some eggs. Another thing I'm not too fond of is the bottle holders are nice. They can carry 500 ml plastic bottles with ease. It's said that if you were to put the more sturdy bottles that everybody carries nowadays, that's not gonna fit in there. So there is that compromise, but there are bottles nonetheless. The room back here, I gotta tell you, is extremely comfortable. Like I mentioned, it's a sedan, it's a, it's, a, it's a compact sedan, and yet I could see myself being driven here at the rear. However, this is, after all, an electric vehicle, and the last thing you wanna do is sit in the back. Where you wanna be is up front. If I were to tell you, yet again, that I'm not the biggest person on the planet, you'd probably be sick and tired of it, but I'm saying it because, look at me, inside my normal driving position now, if you look at the headroom, it's a little bit compromised. Again, perhaps maybe because of the sloping roof line, but cool thing is that if you need a little bit more headroom, if you're a tall person, just open the sunroof and stick your head out, like Manut Ball. Not really a good idea. Okay, inside, the comfort for the driver and the passenger up front is very good. Much like the rear, you do have a lot of space. Albeit for the driver, you feel a little bit cocoon and it's a little flat. Flat in the sense that the screens aren't exactly curved to you. They're quite flat, everybody can see it, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you wish that it would be a little bit more driver centric. In the center console as well, very, very flat, very neat, very clean. So that might take out a lot from people who want just a little bit more je ne sais quoi, I don't know what. You do have a center console that's actually quite deep. We have all our cords there. And it's got two extra USB charging points there in the form of Type-C. Now, when you get to the business of the automobile itself, it's an all digital affair. You've got a 12.3 inch instrument cluster and then a 12.3 inch infotainment display. Now the infotainment is nice because it has Apple and Android capabilities, however, it's not wireless, it's both wired, which I thought in an automobile such as this, they could have, you know, they could have. You have a wireless charging pad down below, and then you've got your physical controls for your audio and your air. Now, you do have shortcuts for your audio and your air, as I mentioned, but you can go to it deep into the infotainment system. But what I'm saying is the shortcut is there, and it's nice. There's almost, almost no piano blacks inside this automobile, but they started creep in in the places where you'd actually touch a lot, which is the buttons on the steering wheel, even the drive mode that's found, looks like a Ferrari start-stop button, and the air controls. However, Earl did point out that if it wasn't piano black, 
then perhaps the lights wouldn't have actually shown through. You've got a lot of storage in here, apart from the center box here. You've got cup holders found here. You've got cup holders on the door. Uh, and then on the door itself, since the, uh, the, the operation for the power windows are found in the center, that leaves the door itself to be very, very clean. And in this particular instance, it is very clean in the sense that there's a lot of storage found up on top and down below for even more bottles. And then there's so much textures inside this car, like on the dash. This here, you'd think it's a texture, but it's really Really not and then you have more cubes found as you would on the lights you got even cubes on your footrest more ribbed on the doors and then this perforated uh, sheet here that covers the Bose sound system really nice a lot of textures inside this automobile it does however have more cool things that I'd like to point out number one the tech in here is very very good and very clear the 360 camera is very nice very clear and not only that when you indicate to the right or to the left your blind spot actually comes into play here in the center that I actually like and then the fact that there's also cool seats inside this automobile number two is the ambient lighting inside this car you can customize it and make it come out in any color that you want and it does a little bit of a dance makes a little love it does get down tonight much like Earl on a daily basis Whoa. number three you've heard of a power tailgate how about a power charging port door huh I like number four are the Pirelli P0s 245s in width these things are like fly paper sticky and finally, the V2L port outlet found here at the rear, which is also a cool thing, but also a not so cool thing because unfortunately, it must be a Korean plug. So you need to get yourself to a hardware to be able to use that port. Or in my case, Unimart lang yan. Another uncool thing is the key. Not very sexy, kind of look like Mork's egg. Nano Nano. Yeah, these guys don't know what it is. And it's so big and chunky that the spare key doesn't even go into the unit itself. And then the last thing is the fact that they've removed the monitors that were supposed to be on either side of the dash because those monitors were actually connected to cameras that were outside the vehicle in place of the side mirror as I showed you in the Indonesian spec Ionic 6. Here, unfortunately, you've got side mirrors. I wish they really kept those monitors and those cameras because it's really cool. You can find the same thing on the EV9, which we have a walk around of. I'm sure the links are somewhere down below. They're really fantastic. It's a trip. So now let's go out for a drive and talk about just exactly how it differs from driving an internal combustion engine. We'll talk about the range and the charging and basically the livability of this automobile and what it feels like to drive it on a daily basis inside God knows what traffic we're going to get up into. But before that, do please subscribe to our channel because we create these videos just for you guys. derived from an electric motor of course but the delivery comes to about 226 horses and 350 newton meters of torque now those figures are not astronomical as you would expect from an ev they're actually closer to well let's just say more premium internal combustion engines but i will say this that simply because it's rated that way doesn't mean that it drives like an internal combustion engine oh no no it still most definitely drives like an electric vehicle which is to say power is instant and when it comes in it's redonkulous observe oh my god Oh, yeah. hey, that's quick. Huh? Okay, stop. Should we slow down? Stop. Yeah, yeah okay. Stop, we'll, stop, okay, stop. okay, we'll slow down. Um, it's very smooth. The power is very good. It, it doesn't, it, there's no knocking of any form whatsoever. The, the, the power is brought into the tires and you just move immediately. Plus you've got P0s on, so it grips really well and you just go. There's no thinking. The car doesn't have to think on what gear it needs to be and whatnot. It just goes. I do realize that there are paddles on the steering wheel, but these are not gears. This is just to change the way that the car regenerates in the sense that um, when you're slowing down or, or when, you, uh, when you step on the, when you release the accelerator and you're coming to a complete stop, these uh, changes the dynamics of how much power is brought back into the automobile and how much more the car will slow down. So it's not exactly paddles to, get you from first gear to second it's not it's an electric motor it has no gears except one like a scooter uh, this is just the the regeneration part 
compared to an internal combustion engine, it's just, it's unbeatable because number one, it's so smooth. There is no shaking whatsoever. Number two, instant torque. It's like you're not you're not spooling the the the, the you're not it's not a turbo that's spooling, it's not a transmission that's trying to find the right gear. It just goes. And number three, it is just so quiet in here. You can change the sound output of the vehicle when you step on the accelerator and right now we've actually put it on absolute quiet and it's really awesome because I can't hear any I can hear the outside noises ever so slightly but that's it everything else is whisper quiet okay except maybe every once in a while you hear Jack freak out when I step on the accelerator and instant torque, that's how this goes. So let's say you are at 50 kilometers per hour as you're pulling out into the highway. I'm doing 45 now, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. And then you just wanna get up to speed to 100 kilometers per hour. This is how long it takes. Two, three, four, five. That must have been like four and a half, five seconds. It's ridiculous. Did you see that? Did, did you see that? Did you see that? Did you feel that? Did you, did you see that? And then I just realized as I was accelerating and talking to you guys, there was no drama. I was whispering. It's, it's, no, it's a no drama llama car. As for charging the Ionic 6, we took it to Shell Mamplasan's DC fast charger with around 100 kilometers left on the range. Now, 18 minutes and 1,150 pesos later, we got it up to 390 kilometers. When charging on an 11 kilowatt wall box you'd have installed at home, it will take eight hours to charge zero to full. Now, range is claimed to be 545 kilometers, but in our experience, with the AC running pretty high because of, well, Manila heat, we saw a range closer to just below 500 kilometers. So being able to charge your vehicle is a possibility. Not a great possibility, but it's a possibility outside when you go to larger gasoline stations, like the ones out in the south, and then there's another one in the north. And then there's also one on EDSA actually, which is where we were able to charge this vehicle. But most often than not, you're gonna wanna be able to charge this vehicle at home. Meaning those people that will buy this vehicle will need to own a garage to be able to support that, or else you're just basically going to be going to gas gasoline stations that are few and far in between. Which brings me to the point as who exactly is this car for? It is for the person that has more than one automobile. See, this, with this price, it cannot be someone's one and only vehicle. Although it can act as somebody's one and only vehicle if they have the means to garage it with a charging station. But for those that we've seen and we've basically scratched our head trying to figure out who it belong, who this uh, vehicle belongs to, it's for those with a much larger car collection that let's say for example have access to a charging point in their own garage. It can't be for people that live let's say for example in a condominium without a charging point because then you're going to be racking your brain trying to figure out where you're going to get your juice from. So essentially, this automobile currently in the Philippines is more for people that have internal combustion engines in their garage and these are basically the fun vehicles that they have. Case in point, Jack brought this Ionic 6 to Mamplasan and while he was charging it there at the Shell station, he got to talking to someone who had brought an EV6 that was charging it also there. And his reason, his rationale for getting the EV6 was just simply because it looked nice and he wanted it. He, he, he wanted it as part of his garage. So what I'm getting at in that sense is that he could afford to get an EV because his primary car wasn't an electric vehicle. He had other cars in his garage. Which brings me to my final point about who this electric vehicle is for. And it's for those people that will not treat this automobile as their primary car. Because when you have an electric vehicle, you are dependent on just that vehicle, right? Let's say it's your only car. The problem is the infrastructure around us just won't support that yet. The charging stations are few and far in between, which means that you may need to be reliant on being able to charge the vehicle yourself. And if you don't have a proper garage to house, let's say, said charging station, then what's the point? You might as well get yourself an internal combustion engine with a vehicle that looks great that costs half as much as this vehicle. You get it? 
not to take anything away from the vehicle at all. No, not at all. I mean, it looks great, it drives great, but we have something to say about that. It has one tiny little problem. It revolves around the premise of it's not you, it's me. In this case, it's not the car because it's great, even though it's priced at 3,798,000 Philippine pesos. It's the infrastructure around it. The Philippines here, our country, is not 100% ready for EVs just yet, which is why there's a bigger demand for HEVs and internal combustion engines. But as is, well, it's no Taycan and it's no e-tron, but the way that it looks, it's not an appliance either. And when you're inside the automobile driving and you finally put it in park, the only thing that you really wanna do is put it back into drive again and just keep on going. This episode of Behind the Wheel was shot on location at Ortigas Estates, Circle of Verde. For more information, visit the links in the description below. Mm -hmm.